Do you guys remember when we used 3D Gaussian splatting to turn videos into 3D scenes like this? What? Dude. Well, the default use case at the moment is just a 3D scene in a viewer, and you can't really do much with that. We want to use these G splats, and the only way we know how is to bring it into Unity. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> Because once we have it in Unreal, we can use it for cinematics, for VR, virtual production, and even Unreal Engine Fortnite editor. But there was a problem. How do we import this into Unreal Engine? And that's when we started searching the internet until we found this one guy, whose name is Kenji, who thought about the exact same thing and decided to create a plugin in the Unreal Engine marketplace that converts these Gaussian splats into Niagara particles that we can view in real time. So let's go and freaking do it. So here's the plan. We trained three scenes for today's Unreal Engine test. The pyramids in Egypt, the steam clock in Gastown, and downtown Vancouver. We're gonna judge how they look in UE5, run some performance stats to see how they run in the engine, and we're also gonna play with some of the plugins tools such as the cropping tool. We'll even set up some cameras and see what shots we can take. Let's jump right in. Wait, wait, wait. If you have no idea of what 3D Gaussian splatting is, we have made a detailed video, make sure to check it out. We are right here behind the PC and testing out our first experiment. We gotta give a big shout out to our friend Majid who sent us the drone footage of the pyramids. So these are the image sequences that we submitted for the G splats. And just so you get an idea, right? These came from a 1080p footage, so they're not anything fancy. And the drone flight path is actually a half orbit, by the way. Just look at how beautiful this looks. It's crazy. I really want to visit Egypt. I know. I think we will go. We have to. After we the Egyptian go, documentary. Yeah. So it's a half orbit, and then it goes up in altitude, gets closer to the pyramid, and then goes back into the same direction. And that is the footage. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the pyramids of Egypt in Unreal Engine wow. 5, baby. Let's this go. This is so good. <laughs> Dude. I cannot imagine how fast we could produce our documentary if we had this in our in the beginning, which you recreated the whole pyramids. I for swear to God. Two seconds of video. Farhad, can you just please understand wow. how crazy this is? We saw the input just now with you guys. You guys saw the images that we gave. We have the exact same thing in Unreal Engine 5. Dude, this is freaking crazy. Look at the other pyramid. You have the other pyramid at the back and I think you have the other one on this side too. We do. And you know what's crazy? Can you see the human? Can you see the humans so here? So tiny. Can you see the humans and the bus? The one thing we couldn't get with nerfs was the tiniest detail like humans or even the smallest cars. But it does come with a disadvantage when you look at the Gaussian spot. If you look all the way into the distance, you notice that everything sort of fades out. There is no detail in the background which is something we usually got with nerves. Have you added any post-process volume to this one? No, but I can do it right now. Let's, let's I've already prepared it. So post-process volume is for us to enhance the visual aspects of our scene. So I just set up a widescreen camera right here. I'm gonna turn on our process right there. So it's a very tiny difference because I didn't want to add too much. That's but it the shows best that we can change the visual aspects of our splats and we can improve them once we get them into Unreal Engine, right? Just, yeah, look at me, look at this. Look at how, even though the background is faded, and that could it's be- It's dreamy now, it's yeah, easy, it, it looks it dreamy. Art. Yeah, you can use it. Dude, there's no way Are we, we could making have a cinematic or what? Should we make a cinematic we right now? Drive? We should do it right Let's now. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Before we go into our next experiment, the only thing I would say is sometimes you have these floaters in the air. Do you see those grids? Oh. Those grids are essentially the, the ellipsoids. They're the ellipsoids that are floating in the air. So luckily, after they're converted to Niagara particles right now, thanks to Kenji, and how they process, you don't really notice them in some angles. But if I were to go into the blueprint right here and show as mesh, see, these are all the floaters in the air. Do you see them? Dude, Dude, this looks like think. some Assassin's Creed shit. Yeah. Dude. When I was reading the paper, it was saying in every single render, there are one, one to, to five, five million, million Gaussians, right? Imagine if Kenji actually adds in a paintbrush tool that you can use to remove the Gaussians you don't need. Oh, then so you can clean up all these areas. All the mess. So the crop tool is there, and we're going to show you that in a second. But imagine if you just want to go ahead and hand paint these specific ellipsoids right here. 
because they're blocking your view for virtual production, for cinematics, because that's what's happening to us right now. Shall we go to the next one? Let's go to the next one. I wanna show you guys how we import them. It's really as simple as just clicking this extra button that gets installed after you bring in the plugin, and then selecting the point cloud that is generated once you create the Gaussian splat. And for the next one, Farad, which one do you want to try? Let's try this theme clock. Can you show the raw, raw footage? Raw, 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 raw. Guys, mind you that this was done 5.30 a.m. in downtown Vancouver. That's when no one is there. Usually there is a long queue beside this theme clock. All right, I wonder how this is going to look because there's steam literally coming out of the clock. As you can see. Oh, oh this, this, was me. Me. this was me. This was me. Yeah, yeah this if, was if me. If you look at me, I'm doing nerfs in the middle of this. Trip. Wow, you wait, did you even keep this left and right thing? You kept all of it. Yeah, I kept everything. I didn't okay. cut anything. Oh wow, it's three pi it's three orbits. Heights. Yeah. Three pi orbits. And it goes around. Okay, yeah, cool. Now we know what it looks like. And it was very dark. So there was not a lot of light. It was very early in the morning. But now we get to see what it looked like. In three, two, one. Turn the lights on. What? Wow, look at that. Wait, let me do a rotate it. Yo. Okay, dude, let me turn dude. on the post post process. Turn dude, it off. This is exactly like Harry Potter. Can you go back? Can you go back? Wow. Can you go back? This is where Harry Potter. He doesn't fly. He teleports into Diagon Alley, and yeah. it looks exactly like this. Going, going, going. Yes. Wow. Dude, it even captured the steam. Yeah. Do you see the steam? It's wow. like this fuzzy looking. You got the signboard perfectly. You can read it. Water street. Water street. And when you get closer, closer you can see all the splats yeah. getting pulled to represent water street. But from far, yeah. it looks perfect. Can you try go behind this lamp? I don't see. think it will work because we didn't capture that angle. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't it work. You see the lamp because you got oh, the, the lamp. Yeah, yeah. The lamp itself, it works from here. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The Dude, the pavement looks amazing. perfect. Look at these. Look at the chains. Look at the chains. Can we try something now? Can you crop the end of the street for me? like So we don't need it, right? Okay. Okay. Imagine I don't need it. All right, we're going to crop it using the blueprint right here. Oh, wow, this actually looks even cooler. <laughs> wow. I'm going to bring the scale up so I capture more. Yes. You want to see perfect. this side. Yes. But imagine if you could just go ahead and paint it off. Even in the middle of the scene, even right here, you have some Same ellipsoids, thing. which you don't need. Luckily, they don't show right now as you're looking at it, but you know, they could Question. become a problem. But just look at this. Okay, I'm going to set up another camera really quickly and we'll be right back. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> wow. All you have to do is just find out one or two dynamic elements that it can add to your scene. Just make it so much more realistic. And just Let's like that, this cinematic? looks... Now? Yes. Three, two, one. Uh, 621 in the morning, WPLZ reminds you this Sunday, December 1st. Oh no, Sunday is another month already. So for the final and last experiment, we are going to try one of our biggest scans. Final, show us our input data first. Okay, so this one was a drone shot we did in downtown Vancouver. And you can see it's beside these trains. And it goes to a half orbit, or I don't even want to know what to call this, but it's a giant orbit. And it was extremely slow, as you can see. It was shot at 4K, you know, really high quality. And it goes around this Microsoft building, actually, if you can think about it that way. And now we're going to show you what it looks like in full in Unreal Engine 5. You ready for this? Let's go. Boom. Wow. <laughs> we got the whole town in there, man. Dude, dude, just look at the quality. This is so I don't even want to move the camera. Just look at the quality. Look at the buildings. Do you I spot can see the Microsoft building. I can spot the Microsoft. You want to get closer? Yeah, let's go to Microsoft building. Boom. Okay, so if you get really close, you, you of see. course you can see the splats. But look at the fact that I can even distinguish that there was a table and chair here. There's, okay. one, there's one table in the corner here. You can kind of spy on people with splats. And look at this building. Look at the trees. Other building. Look at this the trees. Completely behind the building. Wow. The street. That we're just going really far off into the distance right here. But if you really want to pinpoint, you can even feel these this buildings back madness. here. Look at this. This is madness. Wow. Look at this. I don't even know how far I can go. How far you are now from? I'm uh, just super point. far. Let's go back. You'll Look at see. the other side. Look at the other side. Let me see how far you are from the train. Oh, yeah. Wow. Trains right here. So, let's talk about the FPS. Sure, actually, that's yeah. what you want to do. Let's talk about the performance. Yeah. Let's see how fast this is running in-engine right now. 
and we're running wow, at 80, 80 FPS. That's standing still. And if you move around, well, it's still around 80 FPS. Yeah. We're running this on a 4090, but mind you, I have multiple tabs open on Google plus recording this in oh, OBS yes. at 4K resolution. So you can imagine this would be around 100 okay. plus FPS right now as we speak. And Farad, I have the post process on. So if I take it off, you, you can see the difference, right? Yeah, it gives yeah, a little yeah. bit more vibrancy to the colors of the building. So that's really good. And I would say the only downside to this is the sky again. So the same problem we had in Egypt, the same problem we had with Gastown. We have the same thing here because the sky is sort of covered and it's full with of all artifacts. these. Yeah, so if you come all the way up here, you'll notice that. Well, Let's say we want to switch this to alter dynamic sky, right? Because we want to replace the sky. It doesn't really work. Number one, because the alter dynamic sky has the atmosphere effect. So you do get all these little holes that are now yeah. filled with the effect. Plus the sky doesn't really look like a sky yeah. because you can see all the ellipsoids being stretched out. And that was a problem we didn't have in NERFs, right? With NERFs, we could easily replace the sky and have it work. So that's one of the downsides here, but I hope this can get fixed because if you can just remove the ellipsoids, you'll have no problem. I don't know how to deal with the floor though. That's another problem we have to deal with. That's it for Do another time. Do you want to make a cinematic out of this? Out of this? Yes. As well? Three, two, one. Today, Mr. Huxley says that his fictional world of horror is probably just around the corner for all of us. All right, there you have it, guys. That was our first ever experience and impression of bringing in G-Splats into Unreal Engine 5. Not the last one, right? Not the last one for sure. And guess what? You guys now know what it looks like and what the possibilities are. But Farad, we're going to do more tests. So we are going to try this with virtual production. Yeah. We're going to try this to create more cinematics. And are we going to try it with Unreal Engine 4 editor? Fortnite editor? Yeah. Sure, why not? We can give that a try as well because Kenji actually brought in a documentation on his website about taking this into UEFN. We're gonna test that out too. One more thing we're gonna test out is nerfs versus G-splats because clearly there's advantages and disadvantages to both. So if you guys are having fun with us so far. <laughs> having fun. Yeah, having fun with us, experimenting. <laughs> You should subscribe. You should consider, consider subscribing, subscribing to, to this channel to continue having, having fun, fun with us. us.